opening scene to Donkey Kong. Who doesn't remember that iconic intro and then Mario running down the first girder? Well, he really wasn't Mario at the time, as you may know. He was Jumpman in this game. Now that's one fact you may know about Donkey Kong, but here's a few that you may not be aware of. For instance, before the idea of making Donkey Kong, Nintendo was actually planning on making a Popeye-themed arcade game. Now if that Popeye-themed game would have contained the same architecture as Donkey Kong, then Popeye would have been Mario, Olive Oil would have been Pauline, and Brutus, or Bluto, well he would have been Donkey Kong. But due to licensing issues, Nintendo's Popeye-themed arcade idea would have to be put on hold. To think if Nintendo did get those rights to Popeye, well maybe this stubborn gorilla would have never seen the light of day, and everything that we know about Mario and Donkey Kong may never have come to fruition. Two thousand seven. Enter the documentary King of Kong. We're all aware of the battle between Steve Weeby and Billy Mitchell to be the best Donkey Kong player in the world. But since then, who has become the top player in the world? Is it still Billy Mitchell or Steve Weeby? Not exactly. It's been a long time since they've been atop of the leaderboards. Today, you'll find John McCurdy and Robbie Lakeman battling it out for the King of Kong. Now, depending on what website you visit to see the record, you may find Robbie Lakeman or John McCurdy at the top of the list today. But what's interesting about their story today is it doesn't come without controversy. You see, recently, John McCurdy has broken Lakeman's record. But Lakeman and others contest that McCurdy had lowered his power supply to the arcade board down from a standard 5 volts to around 4.6. Why is this important, you ask? Well, they contest that lowering the voltage to the game will alter the randomness of the fireballs on the barrel board. Most importantly, keeping the fireballs at the bottom of the board while the player is allowed to point press at the top without having the fireballs push them upward. Whether there's merit to this argument, it's still to be determined. One final fact you may not be aware of about Donkey Kong is before the light baby blue color design of Donkey Kong, Donkey Kongs were actually red. That's right, red. Before Donkey Kong, Nintendo made a game called Radar Scope. Although very popular in Japan, it did not do well in the United States. So Nintendo decided to send Donkey Kong kits to the USA and make Radar Scopes into Donkey Kongs. Thus, my inspiration for building a red Donkey Kong. Now to understand my love for Donkey Kong, let's rewind 40 years. Back to 1981. Detroit, Michigan, metropolitan area. Arcades were booming, and me and my brother used to frequent many arcades, including Butterflies on Van Dyke, or C.J. Barrymore's on Hall Road, or even the penalty box after a long, hard hockey game for some pizza, beer, and arcades. But probably most memorable to me was Skate World on 15 Mile. This is where all the kids would gather for birthday parties and other events, and of course, it had an arcade. But while kids were skating on the rink, you'd find me in their arcade. Now this is a more modern picture of their arcade, but flashback 40 years and you could find a Donkey Kong in this arcade. And right next to it, well, you'd find me dumping my quarters into that Donkey Kong. Now at a fairly young age, I was not too good at the game. But I recall listening to stories of my brother and his accomplishments in Donkey Kong when he would first get to the rivet board and talk about stories of not being able to jump over the fire ducks. Fire ducks? Well, they're actually called fire foxes and not fire ducks. He would eventually conquer that board and we'd figure out later, yes, you could jump over the fire foxes with a little luck and a little skill. After a few more board clears, he'd eventually move on to the elevator board. The first elevator board would be conquered rather quickly, but the second one a little longer, and the third one wouldn't be conquered till much later in life. Understanding the timing and the pattern of those springs still to this day is considered one of the more difficult challenges in arcade gaming.
even before that third elevator board, you still have to pass what we called the pie board. Now these aren't actually pies, and we didn't know it at the time. They're actually cement mixer buckets. Makes sense, since the game is based off of a construction theme, but we called it the pie board. And unfortunately, I don't recall either of us getting past this board until many, many years later. Now let's fast forward to the year 2020. With a little more time on my hands, I was able to start my dream project, my own Nintendo Donkey Kong cabinet. Starting from scratch with a blueprint of a Nintendo cabinet, I would slowly start cutting away and making the pieces necessary to build a Donkey Kong arcade. Adding the blocking to position all the pieces, the kick plate, and cutting out a section for the coin door to go in. The speaker panel, which would prove to be difficult with those slots or grooves for the speaker. The base, which thanks to Canadian Arcade for a video he did on building a Nintendo base. The top back panel used for holding the arcade when moving, and all the other pieces needed to build a Donkey Kong cabinet. I would then start piecing it together, and at this point I need to thank Brickrod, a fellow YouTuber, who sent me many pictures of his Donkey Kong cabinet and the inside of it so I could figure out how these pieces went inside. For the control panel, in order to save some time, I bought one from Mike's Arcade, which is a new replica of an original Donkey Kong control panel. Looking into the back of the cabinet, we have our power supply on the bottom, a power strip where I would tie in a power button for the unit, a TKG4 working Donkey Kong board. I did have a few issues dialing in that board, but one thing I want to make note is that originally I had a TKG3 Donkey Kong board, but there were a couple issues with this board. For one, it had the easy ROMs in it, or the old original ROMs, and the issue with those ROMs is that there is a cheat in the Donkey Kong game where if Mario is placing his hands on the girder above him on a ladder, the barrels will never fall down on top of him. Now that's an easy fix simply by switching the ROMs on the board. But the second issue was that any reputable Donkey Kong record keeping agency does not allow scores from a TKG3 board. They only allow scores from a TKG4. So by any chance, if I was ever to post a high score, not saying I would, I wouldn't want any question marks associated with it. So I had to get myself a TKG4. Looking more into the back of the cabinet, you'll see I used an LCD arcade replacement monitor. It's very difficult to find a working Sanyo EZ20, which is what Nintendo cabs used. So I decided to go with the LCD replacement monitor from Mike's Arcade. The benefits to the LCD are definitely its ease of install, its weight as compared to a CRT, and its longevity from here on out for the rest of the life of this cabinet. Looking at the top of the back, you have a power switch for the unit itself and a power switch with brightness control for the marquee. When it was all said and done, the final product looked like this. After a year's work of labor, I made sure to get every detail correct, including the pieces used to even hold the marquee in, a perfect replica of the bezel, and even the instructions on the faceplate beneath the bezel, the control panel with the correct button types and joystick, instructions on the control panel thanks to Mike's Arcade's perfect replica, the grooves in the speaker panel, the insert coin sticker, one player 25 cents, two player 25 cents times two, a working coin door with key and lock. Inside the coin door, a working service switch, as well as the proper wooden coin drop box. Taking a look at the side of the unit, artwork from Game On Graphics, which looks fantastic. Now this project did come with its challenges. Although I added wheels to the unit, it was still very heavy and difficult to get inside. And one mistake I made was using three quarter inch width wood instead of five eighths, which is what Nintendo cabs were made with. Now at this point I'm thinking, man, I should have just got an arcade one up. Nah, I'm just kidding guys. I couldn't even say that with a straight face. Well, instead of talking about Donkey Kong, why don't we play a little Donkey Kong? I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. 
I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching everyone.